Hello, everyone. My name is Chen Xi. I was a postdoc at Columbia University working with Professor Steve. Now I'm an associate professor at the Chinese Academy of Sciences. Today, I would like to present my previous work done when, done when I was a postdoc. The title is An Implicit Level Set Based Material Point Measure for Fractional Compact Mechanism of Deformable Particles. Final materials are assemblies of solid discrete particles. They can be found everywhere, such as the flows, band construction. Our goal is to describe the mechanical behavior of granulous, um, granular materials obtained from micro, micro CT scanning images, that is, uh, establishing proper constitutive laws. This figure shows images of hardened sand. We can capture the shapes of grains by micro CT scanning. If we use finite element method to describe the grains, numerous degrees of freedom are needed, and the construction of master slave pairs is cumbersome. However, by using the DEM, we oversimplify the shapes, and the other drawback is that we can't obtain field information for each particle. Therefore, we want to develop a new contact algorithm with acceptable degrees of freedom and field information. That is fractional contact algorithm based on voxel meshes. We all know that the contact problem is essentially an optimization problem. The energy function includes the traditional potential energy and the contact contributions. U is the dis displacement. Lambda is the Lagrangian multiplier. Subscript N and T represent normal and conventional directions. PTT conditions are the constraints to the before field. In the normal direction, the first term ensures there is no penetration. The second term ensures that the contact forces should be pressure. And the third term ensures that if there is a contact, the global gap is zero. In the tangential direction, we adopt the Coulomb fractional, um, the Coulomb fractional law. If there is a slip between the two bodies, the tangential gap, CT, is not zero. And the tangential stress and the shear stress is proportional to the normal stress. And the direction is determined by the tangential gap. Otherwise, the tangential state, uh, state is in state, meaning that the tangential gap JT is zero. The objective of our program is to find displacement U satisfies KTT conditions to minimize the total energy. To simplify our problem, we adopt several assumptions. First, we regularize the tangential constraints. Without regularization, the relationship between JT and the tau T is a strong discontinuity at JT equals zero. Therefore, during the iterative process, we will confront the convergence issue when JT changes its sign. We here divide JT into two parts. One is uh, reversible, the other is non-reversible. Thus, the relationship between JT and tau T is a weak discontinuity. In analogy to an elastoplastic model, we can directly implement the return mapping algorithm to update the shear stress. We also adopt the penalty method to enforce constraints rather than the Lagrangian multiplier method. For the Lagrangian multiplier method, we would introduce extra degrees of freedom. Therefore, we have to use finite, um, we have to use different spatial discretization orders to satisfy the in-phase condition which complicates the problem. 
by, by viewing the solution as a stagnation point, we can derive, derive the expressions for traction and the energy only depend on penalty. Thus, the problem becomes how to define the gap function. We here um, introduce the level set function. One definition of the level set function is the sound distance from points to boundaries. If a point is inside a body, phi is negative. On the boundary, phi is zero. Outside the body, phi is positive. The evolution of a level set is governed by a hyperbolic equation. For quasi-static problem, velocity v is replaced by displacement u, and we here adopt accurate spatial and temporal discretization schemes to evolve the level set. This movie shows a rigid motion of a body. We can see that the boundary can be exactly captured by evolving the level set. In the framework of level sets, we can further define the unbiased contact reference. For body I and body J, we initially obtain the level set phi I and phi J. For spatial points, which um, we choose the minor value of phi I and phi J to define a minor level set field. By using the shift operation, we further define a new level set field whose boundary is represented by the white line. The potential contact zone is defined by these three conditions, that is this, this, uh, this region. We also define an average level set. This, the points on its boundary holds the property that phi i equals phi j. That's the meaning of unbiased. In a summary, we can define a bias contact reference represented by the green line. The whole process is very fast since all the mathematic operations are included. Once, sorry. Once we have the unbiased contact reference, we can define the gap function for an integration point x on the contact reference. We employ the closed close it point projection to determine point pi and the pj after deformation this point moves to here and this point moves to here the spatial vector between these two points is the gap function times normal direction <coughs> we can get the normal gap function times the tangential direction we can get the tangential gap function we further divide the normal gap into two parts one is independent of displacement, and the other is related to displacement. The treatment is used for the vari variation operations. Okay, in a summary, we compute the first order variations of each term in the energy functional to derive the weak form and use the newton robson integration scheme to solve the quasi-static problems. Now we can we can evolve boundary, but for the um, physical fields updating, we use the material point method. MPM is a measure method suitable for large deformation. In the MPM, a continuum is described into several subcontinuums represented by material points. These points are connected with a background mesh by weighting functions. After apply boundary condition to the grids, the mesh deforms, and the motion of the nodes is projected into material points. In the next step, a new mesh is adopted. We can see that the anomalies are only solved at the nodes of the background grid. Therefore, the number of degree of freedom is dramatically reduced than that of conformal meshes. We use level set to evolve boundaries, material point to update the physical variable. To coordinate these two methods, we use the moving least squares to projection the variables dot at the material points to the integration points determined by the boundary for accurate volume integration. 
the finite differentiation is uh, implemented to compute the Jacobian tangent matrix for the convergency. Okay, let's see the verification and application. The first verification is an example of two connecting blocks. The upper, the upper block is subjected to a prescribed vertical displacement. The lower block is subjected to distributed tractions. The bottom is fixed. This figure shows the compression of our results and, and the FEM results. You can see the results are identical. The second verification shows the advantage of our method. Two quadrilateral contact um, with each other along a slope surface. We keep the slope constant and change the fraction coefficient to check the critical value. This has adopted the work says meshes. We can see that the mesh are very simple. No conformal meshes are needed. So the number of degree of freedom is much less than conformal meshes. When the fraction coefficient is larger than the tangent of a slope angle, the two, bo the two bodies are in stick, otherwise slip. We also check our model for the Hertz contact problem. We can see that the, the numerical solution agree well with the analytic solution. We further check our model for a symmetric problem. It can be said that the results are symmetric. We also study the mesh size sensitivity. We can see that although the magnitude of the stress is a little different for various mesh sizes, the contours are most identical. Okay, let's see the results. The first application in, of our model is isotropic compression of an assembly of real grains. We can see that the contact is very complicated. For this potential contact reference, there are three mm, discrete contact points rather than a continuous surface. In our model, only a few degrees of freedom are adopted and we still can successfully capture such complicated contact in the region. Okay. This is our final results. As shown in these figures, we can obtain the stress contributions for each particle and also the microscopic loading curves. We remind that we can consider the deformation of each particle. So our model can be used to determine the parameters of a constitutive loss and also establish the database for machine learning. This work has been published in the CMME, um, which is, is used uh, almost one year. Okay, let's see the, the summary. In this work, we developed a new unbiased fractional contact algorithm for multi bodies based on voxels meshes. We start from energy functional and use the penalty to enforce constraints. The boundary is evolved by level sets, and the physical fields are updated by using the MPM. We use uh, newton robson interaction interactive scheme to compute the quasi-specific problem. Here is our results for Brazilian test. And here is the matrix. Okay, that's all. Thank you.